It is the other, uh, just like there's the y X and Y axis. It's uh, the Z axis. Flexing that, dude. Flexing on the Z axis. I think that's essentially like the third dimension is the Z axis, right? Uh, Z flex. All right, let me pause the music. I'm just fucking trolling, dude. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's what his name is. It's just his name. All right, let's turn this off too. Start off. Missed the jump. I guess I'm just going to start from the beginning. Um... Okay, this is like nitpicky to start off with, but if you're getting like this far off spawn, I'd say just go for like this street. Go for snipe. That's just very nitpicky to say, but you know. That's just what I'd say. And then if if you're behind somebody right here, like I don't know, like I feel like you guys are both initially like essentially you're gonna try and make the same play. Either going street or going through. But, like, if he's already going to make that play, like, and you see where these guys are, like, I'd play for damage. That's just, like, nitpicky, but, like, if you make that jump, then, like, it, it honestly probably still is a fine play, but spreading out a little bit also off the start's not the worst, but then you do the right thing, you push through. But you got to be quick about it. Like, you need to go. Like, people, you got to also realize that people are going to be kind of, like, you know, all over the place. So... You should know that somebody's probably going to be near you here. And if that's what you're afraid of, then obviously poke that. This guy's even one shot. Or is he? He was weak. But if you're looking for this guy, like, be quick about it. Or, you know, jump into ring and, like, take that fight and then be in ring. You're just kind of in the middle of everything. You're not, like, you're just kind of taking your time. You got to kind of take uh, take advantage of the chaos. Now you're just still in the middle of it. And nothing's really happening. And you just get rocketed. Kind of a hard situation to be in anyway, but yeah, take advantage of the chaos and like full commit to something there. Either turning in to fight their bond or full committing to like that guy on uh on that attack mag there. It's hard to really break that down. It's just kind of standard. You're gonna die there most of the time anyway. Spawn up, get to ring. Good fight. Oh. The twofer. The triple. Essentially the overkill. Uh. Okay. I was gonna say, you should probably be, like, set up, like, waiting for something. This is kind of half-assing, like, what you're using Sniper for. Like, you're looking in the center, you're not looking either right or left. They're they're definitely not gonna spawn rocks, or normally they really shouldn't. Either like if they had a lot of influence on you know that side of the map, then they can maybe spawn near you. But like you should be, I would say like kind of maybe more backed up just in case. Also like being right here is just kind of dangerous. Like if a guy happened to walk up bond and then somebody else shot you somewhere else, you're asking to just get fucking shredded. Something just to mention. Um, I'm not sure how the rest of this life is gonna go, but I just want to break this down anyway. Cause I feel like this could be a little bit more efficient. Where like. You should, you should be watching, like, zoomed in already, watching that angle, or zoomed in, like, poking out this side, because you see a guy here, you see somebody walking out, like, this side as well. That's that's just going to get more bang for your buck with a snipe. Okay, you don't need to be tossing nades, you just need to make sure you're, like, actually using your snipe right now. See, because a lot of that time was just wasted. And you're kind of waiting for, like, people to walk into your aimer as you're kind of meant to most of the time with snipe, but, like, you need to make sure you're actually ready and prepared for it. Whenever you're standing out in the open, just looking at this wall, that's not really going to accomplish anything. Like, it seems like you kind of know where people are going to be at. Well, then actually look at where they're going to be. Yeah, I kind of figured, like, something might just happen like that. You get kind of taken out, and then you're dead. Um, one thing I would have said anyway is, like, maybe playing Ring 3 <clears throat> might be better. Like, you get to essentially accomplish the same thing from an even better angle. 
And you're even safer, I'd argue. Because um, if you're ring three and anybody shoots you, you know, from behind you, below you, you can just kind of, you know, crouch up and not really get shot or back down to the street and then you're in a perfectly safe spot. But being out here with Sniper, it's tough, man. It's tough. You either have to be taking advantage of these guys coming off respawn when they do uh, and, like, poking out, but, like, you need to be ready for it. Yo, MBK with the raid of four, I appreciate it. And then now, since you hadn't really been paying attention to what was going on in ring anyway, this entire time, yeah, it's just like a toss-up. Like, that guy could or could not have been there, and he could have been maybe behind you like he was, or he could have been, you know, moving in from front, like, their jump up, so. Kind of hard to really say, like, what is the perfect maneuver, but what I said at least about being more efficient... Because you need to get some kills with that sniper. Like, they're coming off respawn, you have sniper, and you're aware of where they're going to be. You need to do something with it. You didn't really do anything. Like, make sure you're putting it to good use. So I'll close on, on this. Make sure you're putting it to good use, and if you're not getting anything from an angle, then you either have to full commit to that angle, or, um, you know, rotate. I would say in this particular scenario, you probably want to opt to rotate because, like, you have a lot of room to work with. You have a lot of great positions to work off of. Now, this can also be kind of nitpicky because, like, you're never really going to know 100% that are going to chuck a nade there, but you got to just be careful. Like, essentially, like, I, I, I can say, like, of course you're not going to know that a nade's going to just be at your feet, but you should know that you're one shot and, and a flag is right in front of you. They're probably going to nade that. So, I'd say just, like, stand further away from that corner. Like, you do not want to be standing right here. Even this corner, like, you're probably still going to get killed, even if you're deeper in. Just stand kind of further back, get your shield, and then just, like, you know, go for the run. But you got to be careful when you're one shot. You don't want to be moving forward, uh, especially on, like, an OBJ, because that's just going to cost you sometimes. Could have gone Bond. Uh, I mean, maybe, but honestly, like, I think your play is fine. Like, I, I think where your positioning was was actually okay. Um, wait. I think your positioning is okay, but you needed to just not die there. Like, you, that, it's just kind of an average death. Like, these kind of deaths, like, you just really need to make sure you're minimizing. Like, they'll happen sometimes, but, like, you're one shot and a flag is down, other teams are probably going to chuck nades. Like, they're going to either be watching it, and they're ready to shoot, or they're going to be chucking nades at it. Now, they don't really have the angles, but they have the nades. Like, nobody's just sitting out deep in rocks or right here on, like, BR, but they're going to chuck some cross-map nades. So, you know, just take, take an extra half a second. At least start to get your shield so that you can grab it and then run it like maybe one shot or something. If that's really what you're going to try and do and be quick. But you just got to make sure you're playing these, these corners carefully um, when you're one shot. Where's Flag at right now? The, on, I can't believe he took it ramp. That's such a bad play. That was, a, that was a very easy cap if uh, your teammate takes it into uh, Courtyard. I need to actually rewatch. Okay, so yeah, this is still bad on your part. So you're, I would say your teammate made a bad play. Taking that flag there. That flag did not need to be there at all. I could have easily been ran through courtyard. But if this is me in this situation, like I might lay down some shots in this guy or like try to take the piv. But like there's also an opportunity to just also get down some damage and move into your base. Cause like the only way you really cap this flag, like realistically, is if you have like some control in this base, like near the flag point, like the flag cap point. So these guys can't just be here. So you need to either make sure you're full committing to this guy and not just throwing your life away like you do. Like, look at how you challenge out. Like, you're just jumping out, asking to get shot by the other guys. Like, this is kind of normal, kind of normal. But, like, you're jumping so far out here that these guys just have an easy angle on you. Like, you gotta just for you gotta cut the angle. Cut the angle if you're gonna take this fight or opt to move into your base 
Because here's a couple things that I also want to say is, you're like one of the first spawners anyway, so if you move into your base, and somehow you manage to kill like, you know, Envoy here, and like maybe somebody, like you back that guy down, either your teammate can go for the pull, or maybe it returns, but they're not going to get the pull. Like, I feel like they're probably about to get a pull here. We'll see how it works, but like, I don't know why Envoy is so gung-ho on moving through. It's crazy that your team actually got a touch, so I feel like that should just should not happen. It seemed like blue team actually just fumbled that. But, you could have moved into the base already. Like I said, moving into the base to get these guys weak, or even kill them, to make it easier for your teammates to get that pull. Because look at what happens, is like, they get that pull, you're already dead. Like I said, kind of an average death, you just threw your life away. This guy manages to get the pull, but if that guy was already dead right there, or already one shot, challenge your teammate Hut, and then you were able to put down damage on these two, that probably would have just been an easy cap, even. It's crazy that your teammates got it this far. I'm surprised they even got the touch, but um, you can just see that like Envoy's still controlling your map, like your side of the map, and then these guys are still in your rocks. So that's how important like your positioning can be in these situations, in these types of like OBJ situations. That you gotta like you gotta be aware because it seems like you're just taking a fight to take a fight, and you're not even aware that like your flag, like this thing is literally just 20 feet away from being capped. And, like, the play that you're making right now, it just seems like you're challenging just a challenge, as if, like, that's not even a, a factor. So you gotta be more careful. Because even if you take out that guy right there, like like I said, you maybe play that a little bit more careful. With, you win the piv. Um, maybe you even get your shield or you start poking. You can start doing some more damage or poke this way, get some more damage. Your teammates can then move out from hut. And then these guys that are also spawning below you, they can also move in even more... Because, like, if they move in the same way they do while you're dead, if you were alive on street, it would have been, like, again, same thing if you pushed back and uh, taken the position from there. You would have had so much more damage or even gotten another kill on these guys just out in the open. And it would have made that flag cap and that flag run even easier. So, you're just kind of throwing your life away a little too easily. You might still die anyway, but you got to make that a little bit harder of a death on the street there. And then you come off respawn. Flag is at home, so honestly, I f let's just see. Like, I feel like you really should have gone back, but let's see what you do. Yeah, you're sprinting around. You got to know these people are, like, waiting for this shit. You got to know, like, these guys are near you, and they're going to be waiting for you to make this type of play. Or, like, they're just going to be able to recognize it very quickly. So, if you're going to do this play, like, you need to be walking. Like, you need to be walking, and, like... You need to start shooting, like, right away. Like, there's no reason not to shoot. The flag is down, my man. You need to get damage now, or it's not going to be capped. Like I, like I said, I like, personally, you spawning courtyard here, I think you have enough time to push in through tunnel, or, you know, jump up top hut, and clean up this guy, and then just go in, maybe go for a crazy, like, thrust slide to cap that. But, like, this is, again, you're just so f not even thinking about the OBJ. Like, I think you're out of it. You're not even doing damage while out here, so that is 100% an average death. You did not accomplish anything in that in, in that moment. Teammates somehow still managed. So you were literally out of the play like three lives in a row, almost. Your teammates still managed to cap the flag, so it's like if you were just a little bit more focused, like I don't know if you were thinking like, oh, it's a dead flag, it's a dead flag, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Maybe that's what you're thinking in the heat of the moment. Like, it's not over till it's over. Like, that flag is not back at their base until, uh, like, you know, that timer hits zero and it's back. So, still had that focus, and then still had that focus on this side of the map anyway, because you need to be doing something. Like, if, if that flag got returned, the blue team was very set to start moving that flag like they started to. Flag's out, two teammates dead. You move forward. Okay. Gotta be playing for rockets. Okay, that was like a little lax, maybe a little bit too relaxed, but it's very fortunate for you, you're able to move in, not really have too much trouble. Yeah, I've got the double. Now would be the time to push rocks. Grab the attack mag, yeah, no, you need to just start moving. You should be doing the same thing while moving up. You just killed two, you see one guy, that means there's one guy somewhere else. So he went off, you know, to your jump up. Like, you could have easily have checked. Like, if you don't see anybody right here, 
you don't see anybody when you're just like watching these angles. This is like one of those gambles, very high likelihood gambles that it's like now is the time to apply pressure and move up on the map because your teammates are already like look at where your teammates are about to be. They're about to be in ring. One teammate coming off respawn. You are the man to push up and apply that forward pressure. No need to thrust back. See, now you waited long enough, now your teammate pushed ahead for you. So I'm glad somebody still recognized it, but this should have been you, and you should have been, like, already all the way up here. And, like, you could have been getting shots on these guys. I mean, they're, they're still spawning up, but you could have been getting easy shots with attack mag from here, or already on their BR. Way ahead of time. It's all about the efficiency, so... It's fortunate that somebody finally, like, picked it up. Actually, kind of quickly, but that definitely should have been you. But... We'll just keep going from the play you made. That's just like the more hypothetical, like if you want to be as efficient as possible, which is what your goal is to be most of the time, especially in a comp scenario, like you want to be as efficient as possible, you get an easy double, now is the time to move. You still got to be careful. It seemed like you were aware, but you should still be pushing up while being careful about like where the spawners are going to be. So then you don't push, you know a teammate's pushing rocks. You're watching the cross. Jump in a ring. Hold forward at command station. These fights, you just gotta go. You just gotta commit to something. Like, especially on these poles, um, in ring here. Um, I'm just gonna have to let it play because I don't have the perfect timing. <coughs> Once you get somebody weak and you have your thrust, like, just burn it. Just start holding forward. Like, if if I see that person's, like, half shields right there, I'm gonna just, like, just jump thrust off this ramp into their face to maybe get a, a melee. Because I know how annoying these things are. Or I get that person one shot, I'm gonna bank a nade, like, off the wall or something. And make sure that... Or bank a nade off the ramp. Right at their feet. That's another thing that you should be doing. Oh, you did that, though. But then now is the time to hold forward, and the only spot that that person can go is forward. And you're cutting off your angle. See, so, like, you just cucked yourself. You just, you literally just, you did the right thing, and then you just completely cut off the angle of the only escape option being, like, right there. So, that's a little niche, a little, uh, a little slight thing that's just, like, it's so small, but that costed you your kill, and that costed you your life. Because now you, you're focused in this, you're focused, you're focused. The entire time, you gotta hold forward. Like, if you're stuck in ring this is a dangerous spot, and, like, what's gonna happen, or what happens here is exactly what happens. Like, you're waiting long enough, and then this person gets a, a teammate to come help. Literally just start holding forward, or just, like, start, start sprinting, and then, like, just start start the chaos. Make something happen. So, because, like, that death should not happen. Should not happen in that scenario. I got some games for Q and Z flex. <laughs> I wasn't too thrilled to see, like, a game where the stats were pumping, but I've definitely seen some uh, not so great plays. Why did you just let them know exactly where you were? I don't know how you're still alive. You you really should be dead. It's literally a two v one. The fact that you're sprinting around and using your thrust, and they know exactly where you are... ...kinda confuses me. And then they forgot about you. Oh, but you just looked at Sniper. No way, you gotta be aware of that. You're still somehow alive. They're just- they're just choking. Yeah, that was just kind of a... Oh, dude. I did not mean to do that. Hello? Is the game going to start? We're on a black screen. The game... Dude. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> game broke. Just one second. This is more like the C-Flex POV. <laughs> oh my god.
you minus the health. Why'd you? Oh, I, I'm gonna have to just give you your points back. Come on now. Marker's complete. Marker's complete. Just reject. Rejecting that one. There we go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Quick intermission. Intermission time. It's intermission time. Maybe it'll start at this time. There we go. Chuby with the two months. Welcome back, man. The Pog. The Pog. <laughs> I appreciate it, Chuby. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for the support. Alright. We're like here. Yeah. So this entire time, like I think this is pretty standard. You got through quickly, and he just starts sprinting. I don't know why you start sprinting. Like you want people to stay um like they like this guy just sees you on the radar the entire time. This guy knows exactly you're going through. This person knows exactly where you're going. It's like uh, I don't know. You're already so deep into it like you want to make sure things stay sort of anonymous or like you just don't, don't want them to know exactly where you are or what you're doing. Cuz like I said they are choking hard. You should just be dead already. Like you missed missed your thrust up. Now you're still managing, but these guys are really, really messing. I don't know how this guy does not kill you. He backs up. <laughs> you should be dead like three times over. So I would say a lot of this is lucky. You're doing okay, but a lot of this is lucky. That's all I'm going to say. And then... You gotta just see Sniper there. If you see that guy walk through and that's not Sniper, like you gotta know, Sniper's around you somewhere, there's two people. Cause that I can't believe they forgot about you. This would have been like a free like back smack if you recognized it. Free back smack with a sniper, and then like you pull a flag. Free as hell. So yeah, I can't really knock that. Like you decided to stay low, but if I was you, I would probably have just taken my. Oh my god, just get get me back over here. Uh, I would have taken my chances going top butt. But that's not, like, the biggest deal. The biggest deal was more so, like, you had opportunities and windows. Um, emote only chat. Dude, come on. Come on. I'm going to reject those for now. That's what we're going to do. You get your, point, your points back. We're not going to do that. Um... Yeah, I, I think, I think that we're not, we're not watching anything else. Stop, I'm watching his gameplay for now. We're doing this. I think you should have taken advantage of the window that they finally somehow forgot about you and Hut, and they really shouldn't have, but you should have been a little bit more just on the down low. Like, you need to take your time. Dude, Funky, stop, dude. Stop. I'm not putting an emo in only chat right now. I'm not doing that. I'm keeping it off so that I can talk to him as he's in here. If he has any questions. But on to the next life. Spawn hut, went straight to street, and ring three. Double. This is spawn. You get bland. That's, you know, that's pretty standard. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fine trade. A little, little close, a little close. You probably could have maybe backed off sooner, but, I mean, you wanted to make sure you got that kill, so. That's not a big deal. Those last two deaths are not the biggest deal. Yeah, I think most of this is good. 
Uh, need to rewatch a little bit. So this is what I would say is uh do not use your thrust like you just did there. Cuz you guys just got I think like one or two kills leading up. So you, yeah, you got one kill, two kills, third guy goes down, but now like the spawner's coming up. And you got to be aware of that. So if you're going to push, now is the time to push straight ahead. Like you shouldn't be thrusting out this way. Like you should be thrusting in straight away. Thrust in straight away and chase that guy down to get that kill. Or another option is to be aware that there's now people coming off respawn and take care of like the back line. But you're just kind of sitting in the middle and now you burn your thrust. Like you got to take a more direct route on the guy that is actually the last alive for a second or, you know, set up for this guy that's pushing through. Again, this is just kind of an average death. You didn't really choose a path. You weren't you didn't choose a path until like you were forced to. You're just kind of walking in the middle, slow walking at them. And you didn't just soar at the guy that was last alive, stuck in that tunnel, and then you didn't, you know, go the other way to be more on top of the spawn sort of the spawn trap going on. So, just kind of an average death. Earn your deaths. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say that exactly, but that's pretty much what I'm saying. Is uh, Some of these deaths are definitely quite poor in some of these situations, but... Um, yeah, it just come, it's been coming down to, some, this, to the decision making. And you should not be out here right now. It's, again, it's kind of lucky that you're alive, yeah, and then you're dead. Yeah, these are just very average deaths. That's the point to give up the flag. Like, once you die there, and then I think your teammates start to just trade out and die. Yeah, kills are being traded. Teammates going out the main ramp. If you see your teammate die, like, right there, the best thing you can do is just, like, just ADS and try to just hit some shots. And then, like, hold down ring. You don't want to be jumping out, because then there's, like, a person like this just waiting for that. Like, that person right there could also have been just a person waiting main ramp, just waiting for you to jump out, shooting you from rocks. And then, like, a similar thing would have happened. It's actually worse that this guy is here in this scenario. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, dropping down in a 1v1 like this isn't the worst, but it's just not that great because now the rest of the team just has this opportunity to chuck nades and look at you. So, um, you try to sprint out. That, that's not the worst. You just try to take a chance getting out of there, but... Yeah, being that committed to a flag that was pretty much dead, um, you just kind of gotta you gotta separate yourself from the situation a little bit. Can't die like that. Got to ring three right away though. And you gave up ring three right away. I would say you should still probably be ring three right now. Flag gets taken. Not sure you noticed just yet. And I think now you're aware of it. Get shot in the back. This is pretty good. See back smack. Don't need to be wasting your thrust. No, dude, you gotta get that kill. I'm not sure how long that flag has been sitting there. Let's see. Okay, that flag has been sitting there for a while. The flag's been sitting there for a while, but you literally look right at that person. Like, you can still do the same thing, just like shoot and then drop. Because that's literally just what's costing you there. I don't know. I mean, I, that's still a good grab, but I, I really do feel like you could have just gotten that kill. It's not the worst. It's not the worst death, though. That's a, If there is a good death, that was a good death. Because your teammates were ready for like the relay right afterwards. I was just more so afraid that like you just went for that, and then there was nobody around, but there were... Everybody was still, like, there, and kills were traded, so... That was still a good death, but I think you probably could have just, you know, hit the headshot. But going for that touch is still a good touch. Spawn up, go for snipe. Okay, yeah, you could probably just sit still, maybe back up back in the hut. 
Oh, you are out there right now, man. I'm surprised you're not dead. That guy in ring could have easily just poked back out, but I guess he just left the situation. You're alive. I feel like this is kind of lucky. I don't know. Like, I feel like these types of situations, they really just do not happen that often. Like, if that guy sees you in ring, like that right there, if he, in any, like, comp play, that guy is just probably going to stay there, and then, like, if he knows his teammate's going to push up from, like, tack mag, he is ready to just poke again. And then, like, you get back down, and then he's just going to shoot you from street this entire time, and you're, like, you're dead instantly. This guy opted to just, like, kind of stay here, and then got pulled into another fight. But... Stars align this game for sure? No, I... I've been seeing some stuff that I can just tell. It's like, this normally should not be happening. But you're still alive. I would want for you to get up top, like back into hut. Like, you should be hut right now with sniper instead. No, snipe out, snipe out. Snipe out, Z-Flex. This entire time, like, you don't want to be walking around with sniper like this unless, like, things are turning in your team's favor. Like, you can be more aggressive in this nature. Like, your team got two kills. I mean, it's hard to say, but, like, your team got two kills, but this is, like, the positioning you guys are in. And they still have ring control. So it's like, you should, I feel like, be opting to get up top and then play from up top. And, like, this guy's still there. There's another guy across. And then they're coming off respawn already into ring. So it's like, you need to be setting yourself up I don't know, this is just a risky play, so you opt to take the risky play, though. Still gotta keep the snipe out, though. In comp play, if people see you like this, and you don't have snipe out, you're kinda asking for it. These guys are just way caught off guard. Not even for a good reason, really. Kinda stacked with your teammate. Snipe's still not out. This entire time, just keep the snipe out. Dude, keep the snipe out so you can get these, like, these guys are just standing still for you. They're standing still. Take those shots. Like, if you're gonna be risky, you need to make sure that you're using ammo on top of that. So, like, that's where that also comes from. Is like, if you're gonna take these plays, and you're gonna take it to them, like, you need to be sniping hand, like, going for some shots. At least while you can. Like, swapping to your pistol is more like the secondary, like, maybe you are trying to work off a team shot with a teammate or like there's just I don't know that's like one of the only times and that's more like in comp play you really experience that but you can still be going for snipes and then like swapping to your pistol in between finally had the snipe out took a couple shots but you got it crossing over see like that's a fine cleanup now be time to pick up or pull the snipe back out yep I was about to say, I, I kind of wanted you to go ring three right away. Took your, took your time though. Okay, yep, didn't full send for it. Kind of toss the nade. Okay. Things are still kind of lining up. That guy's just walking at you backwards. That was just a little sloppy. Fodder if you have elevate, stop. Yeah, that, I mean, that was just a sloppy gunfight. That you really just shouldn't lose. I mean, even in the first place, I don't know why you drop down to get, like, close out that kill. You can close out that kill from up top. I feel like people have a habit of doing that. Like, they just don't acknowledge that they're, like, dropping. Um, or, like, just, I don't know. Like, they don't understand their movement while they're getting kills. And like, they're just kind of subconsciously just doing it, just to do it. Now, if you're, like, I don't know. If you're over here and then the guy's around the rock, I can understand dropping and then like pushing out, but just for that kind of kill. Oh yeah, you, get, you just gotta go for the three shot melee. Or just keep your distance, like you don't even need to go for the melee there, just start shooting him. So, sloppy gunfight. Come off respawn. <clears throat> Go for the tech mag. Kind of flanking around. Okay. 
need to be quick about looking at this flag guy. It's good, go for rockets. Good. Ooh. I was about to say, just if you see a one shot guy, just take out that pistol real quick. But. Just watch. Your job with the flag being like in this position should just be like I don't know. Like I you need to keep your eyes on flag. Like I don't know like where are you where are you looking in this situation? That's like what you need to recognize with like why we're paused right now. What are you doing? You're not looking at this guy who's just walking in a straight line. You weren't even really waiting. I mean, this guy walked by you, but it's like, he's going to go for a flagpole. Like, that's the kind of the, the moral of all this. Is like, they're going to desperate. They're going to try to go for a flag play here. So it's like, I think you needed to be more set up, like, in between. Like, you needed to be in between where they're going to be and, like, where the flag's going to be. Your teammates already kind of have this locked down on this angle, and you guys are up top. It's like, you can also just kind of be standing right here rocket that guy, and then instantly be ready for this guy, or rocket him while he's coming up. You're just, you're like kind of in the middle, but like you're not. Like you're not really in between, you're not that barrier. Like you need to be that barrier with rockets. So, <laughs> you rocket your teammate. You gotta be careful with that. <laughs> you don't even kill Envoy. Now's the time to move up though. Or recognize, like, your teammate just died in ring next to you. There's a guy moving above you. Reacted a little late. I don't know why your teammate's just going for a flagpole. That's bad on him. Like, that's a bad play by your teammate. He just completely left that person on street completely alone. But yeah, this is, like, what I'd do in your situation. Let me, like, just kind of see where you go. I mean, if I'm you, and I'm already right here after getting that kill, flag is down right here. If I see my teammates on this side of the map, like, that means that you can stay more pushed up. Like, you can literally just, like, the only angles that they're going to get that flagpole is either pushing through, like, Bond or your jump up, or they're going to go straight for it, and, like, that's literally a death trap. And that's fine if they, like, you want them to go through the death trap. You don't want them to just walk in like they do. You have rockets in your back pocket, use those rockets and just, like, literally chill here for a second, because then you would just see Envoy walking up. And like maybe you get shot in the back, but at least you kill somebody. Like you, you should. You, like if you get shot in the back here, you either get that kill and then like kind of can focus something else. But again, you're just standing in the middle of it, and you're just getting caught off guard. Like you got it's it's again like something that you could be more committing to better positions. At least with this weapon, that's just real sloppy. So that that just has to be broken down, especially with the betrayal. <laughs> And I mean, your teammate kind of left you out to dry. I don't, it seemed like you still didn't didn't even know like the guy was above you, but your teammate should not let you take that fight street completely alone. Yeah, that, that recommend guy made such a bad play. So they cap, and then flag is in not a good spot. Flag is in such a poor spot. Twenty dollars to review the truth game. The truth game. What's the truth game? I mean, I wouldn't mind doing another one another night, but I'm not sure if I want to do another one tonight. Okay, I need to like kind of rewatch some of this. How long is the truth game? Because if it's a longer game, then I don't really want to watch it. At least not tonight. So one thing that I will say is also Sniper's going to be coming up soon. About 10 seconds. Uh, that flag is literally dead, man. So you just need to make sure you're not playing for that. That flag is done for. Cross mapping when your teammates are dead or dying, it's just not a good idea. So like you probably want to opt to just go ring three right away and then just play for you know these people just walking in trying to get positioning. Because now you're just in a really bad spot. 
and you get into this gunfight. You happen to win it, but that's okay. Gotta be up, moving forward towards snipe. It's a good win. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's much to really say about it. It's kind of, it's very fortunate that you're able to move through. Like, it doesn't even hit you. Yeah, and there's a guy just waiting for you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna nitpick that. You're just kinda done for there. <coughs> Good shots. Guy on you and hut. He's pushing past you. You gotta just be moving. You just need to go. You saw him on your radar. Damn. Yeah, that guy literally just started sprinting away from you on the radar. But I don't think he even noticed. Also, your reticle placement, really poor. That's just one thing I wanted to mention, at least. Like, just look at where your reticle was whenever command station's challenging out. You're, you're just, like, looking at the ramp. You know that you start turning... But then you're looking just down there. Like, you need to be prepared. Looking right at where she's about to pop out from. Just looking down. And then you're caught off guard, and then you're burning your thrust because you're also not prepared. That's just... That's about, like, the inefficiencies in a gunfight there. And then she, sprint, she sprinted away and jumped out, and then you're just sitting here. Sitting, you're sitting, you're sitting. You need to take this direct route. Like, you know your teammate is getting sword at. Like, take a direct route. You're taking way too long and just leaving him out to dry. And then you get blamed in the back of the head. I don't know why your team is going for a pull, but that's kind of besides the point. Flag got pulled. Got to rank three. This isn't too bad. So, gets closed out. It's good, at least. It's a good melee. Rockets are coming up. Rockets, rockets, rockets. Okay, you're opting to help your teammate ring, or rocks. Dude, I... In all of this, yeah. This still just looks really sloppy. This entire situation... Like, that guy drops out there. Rockets literally just popped. This is, like, the perfect time to just go for him. And you're just... Like, even if that guy is out there... Here's the thing. You react to the maybe, like, the shots being in rocks. So, like, you clean that guy up. I think that's okay. Not going straight for rockets if like, you want to help that team out. But you need to just go right away. Just go for these. These are, like, the most apparent ones. I don't know if you knew Sniper was here. Because I don't think you did. Like, I think you're just, like, kind of unaware of the situation. And you're like, oh, a Sniper. And you drop for Snipe. Like, these are literally on your screen. They just popped. These are important. Like, you need to get these. These Snipers are on your side of the map. You will get these eventually. Or, like, your teammates will get them. But, like, these rock... Like, you need to be in ring right after you get that cleanup kill. Go for those, and then, like, if you know a sniper is there, then go back and, like, pick up sniper or whatever. Even now, like, I I'd opt to probably go for rockets first. Or, I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, at this point, if I see a sniper in matchmaking, I'm probably just going to go for it. But, like I said, rockets popped after you get that cleanup kill. Instant, like, turn around and see what's going on with, like, the situation in the ring. That's got to be, like, number one. Surprise command station didn't go for those rockets, but... You gotta, you gotta help your teammate in ring there. Those are kind of being traded out. You're still alive. The guy missed a couple shots. And he just ran into some, some nades. So, you got that sniper. You did nothing with it because it's a hard, like, you're in a not great position to, like, work with it. Um, yeah, you just gotta play for, like, the, the middle of the map there with the new weapon popping. Like, that's going to be the focus, not the snipers on your jump up, the rockets popping up in the middle of the map.
That is the important focus. Because if you focus that, you're also going to be able to focus with, like, your teammates... Excuse me. Your teammate was focused on the guys in front of them in ring. Playing for rockets. So those are two things. Your teammate's doing, making a play. And you're not helping them. And then rockets are coming up. Brand new rockets. You don't know how many shots were in those snipes anyway. Brand new rockets. In ring. And, it, I mean, the third part is, like, it's just ring control anyway. So you need to make sure you are... Like, those are very important aspects to the gameplay of, like, you need to be aware of in the middle of the match. Not just, you know, clean up kill and then see Sniper on the ground and go for it. Like, your mind needed to already automatically be focusing. Teammate and ring, rockets just popped, like, we got a kill or two. Like, that should mean, like, in your brain that now is the time to further, like, uh, stick it to the other team. And really, uh, accomplish something there. That was not good. I don't know what's going on, dude. I don't know how to even really break this down. Um, if you if you know that guy is gonna be there, like I don't know. Like the only thing I can say to help you in this gunfight is to like like your reticle placement again not good you're not you're get, you're like kind of catching yourself off guard with like where you're looking because you're not already automatically kind of like moving your reticle with like your movement you're kind of just like looking looking and then you're moving and that's just kind of not helping you and then yeah like that's just you just messed up you choke choke the gunfight Take my thumb off the thumbstick. <clears throat> so, either invest in paddles. Spe like, melee is still important, man. So, invest in paddles. Play bumper jumper. Or learn how to claw. Any of those three things, because that's very important. If you're trying to compete, if you have to take your thumb off the like, thumbstick, that's going to be rough, man. Some people can do it. But, um... I would still highly recommend, like, just make it easier on yourself and just, like, invest in some of those things. Wait, they were running a flag and you were looking that side of the map? That's not good. Yeah, so that guy... Oh, they're already running it, though. Uh... If I see a teammate rocks, though... Like, you have a teammate in rocks... You gotta be aware of your teammates, Z-Flex. You gotta be aware of your teammates. Like, this guy doesn't even really matter. What matters is, like, these guys over here that are running flags. That you could easily be moving behind. Like, they're not even focusing you hut. But you're opting to, like, jump out at this guy. This guy doesn't matter. Like, that guy lives, and now, like, these guys... I think they killed your teammate. Yeah, they killed your teammate in rocks. But even if he dies, you're still behind these guys already. So here's what I'm gonna say, is... These are the windows that people just miss all the time. Um, even on, like, truth, is, like, there are moments to just go back to your base. Some close moments where you can make the decision, but if they were already that far when you first spawned up, okay, then, yeah, just challenge out. Like, if they're already over there. But they were still, like, in your base as soon as you respawned. Like, just look at where the positioning. I think they literally just pulled the flag now. And the guy's not even moving. Like, he's not moving out of your base. And he's one shot. Flag guy is one shot. You literally can turn. You might have missed it, but, like, you can still shoot these guys and take this fight at least. Because, like, if they're getting that run, like, that's kind of the only hope, I'd say. Is to, like, catch them off guard now while they're still kind of staggered. Your teammate was alive, Rox. He's dead now. But, like, if you could have gotten... like, And also, so that's one thing, too. Envor was the guy standing bridge, and then he's the one that left to go for that flagpole. That leaves room for the rest of your team to kind of play off of that, I'd say. But, like, you didn't even commit to your... So, again, you're kind of walking the middle path. You pushed out here, and then that guy got away, and then you just kind of stood still. But, like, you need to be moving through. Like, you gotta move across... And, like, try to get through above them, or... I mean, yeah, probably going, like, ring 3 or staying ring 2 to shoot over these guys is, like, your best bet. 
if you did that as well, like that could be another good option. This is just one of those things like in most scenarios, you don't really know who's in ring. Like there's nobody in ring right now, but there could be a guy in ring. So forcing that gunfight could be more difficult. But I would say like the spawn advantage that you had at least was like you had a teammate in rocks and you could have been very quick to just be behind them. And you might have just gotten an easy double uh, while there, things were still kind of chaotic. But you kind of just focused on a guy that didn't really matter all that much. And then this guy doesn't matter either. Like, he's doing his job. He is taking shots with you so that you look back. And now they're just running the flag for free. And that's GG. That's a hard situation to be in anyway, so I'm not going to say, like, oh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. But, oh shit, many moments like this are going to happen no matter what. They're going to happen all the time. Especially in flags. Where, like, you have a window to... Not just be aggressive for a pick, but, like, your base is under attack, and you need to defend it. And, like, the defense doesn't... Like, your defense doesn't go out, or, like, your defense isn't done just because the flag is, like, on the move. That doesn't mean, like, okay, just give up the base, like, go. Um... Especially in a moment like this, if you realized that those guys were kind of getting stopped, and you already had a teammate kind of doing the same thing that you were doing, like he was walking out. Like, this guy is just caught off guard. You should be able to get the first, like, couple shots, even kill him, and then push behind. And then your teammate's sitting in rocks here. Would have been very easy help. There's actually three guys here. So, like, if you could have killed even one or two of them, that means, like, the rest of your team could have moved into ring to hopefully help. Not always guaranteed. I'm not going to say, like, if you just did that, you win the game or anything like that, or, like, everything's fine. Because, like, there's still a bunch of factors, but I think your chances of keeping your guys in the game is definitely higher if you just focus that. You spawned up while they were not moving flag. So think about it this way. Also, this happens all the time on Truth, where it's like, say this is car side, and this is, like, pink side for running a flag. If they're just getting the flag moved, but it's still just sitting on Eli here, and they're not moving yet, like they're not already out, and you already spawned up bubble, and you can literally just like thrust slide in behind them, like this is even, it's even easier to kind of visualize it with refuge, because it's like even more open and even faster to get back to the base. Where it's like, this is your opportunity to be behind them and just get easy, easy shots and help your teammates, you know, just help these, help them getting uh because they're getting shot in the back so you just help your teammates by cleaning up some kills on your side of the map and that flag it's going to be a lot harder for them to do but like this guy even if he didn't drop down because like he probably could have easily died there if he just kind of like got that kill and then back down he accomplishes the same thing it's just as easy where like he just doesn't die and then like you're just you're doing nothing now so because like even if you got that kill that's another thing even if you got that kill I don't know. It, it's still not a guarantee. That's just one guy, and then there's three of them running this flag in. But you didn't really full commit to the push left. You didn't go right. You didn't go right back to base to kind of take advantage of the, the stagger that they had, and then they just get the easy flag run. So... I, like I said, I'm going to make the point that like I think the better play, in my opinion, is to be a little bit more uh, conscious of like the stagger and take advantage of them, you know, being a little bit slower on the flagpole. Because it's just like, look at that. He's just not even looking at you. And I'm pretty certain you already spawned up. Okay, now you just spawned up. He's just not even paying attention. And this is the guy that runs the flag. This is the guy right here. Now... It's not always the case. Like, that guy could have maybe just kept running it like he he could have. But, you know, very. this is a much easier pick than this guy shooting you guys in the side while you're all distracted. So, these kills matter a lot more. These are, like, the kills that really matter. If you can get them and you had the window and you just, like I said, you didn't, you didn't take it. And then you just get the run simple as that. So there's a lot of slaying out of you, but a lot of like inefficient plays. You're capitalizing on a lot of situations just to get kills, but you're not really 
You're not playing to win the game. You're playing to just get kills, is like what I saw that match. A lot of the time. And then, like, there's certain moments that certain key factors to winning the game, power weapons, power positions, you're just kind of giving them up or not really worrying about it. Um, and that just kind of cost you.